Hello everyone, and so far, our game is pretty good. I mean, we have collision animation. Hey, I, th I think it's good. But making a level currently will take quite a while. So, I think I'm going to make this video dedicated to loading your own level from any PNG file. So, right now, I have this little tiny level designed. So, let me uh, do that real fast. This is the whole level. It's a little maze and we take away that and this is our player this is where the player will spawn and if we have them both together this was this would sort of be what it would look like so for the tiles the tiles are going to be added based on the color so right now this color is the value of has the value of red being one and that would be the ID of the tile so we can have 255 different tiles but if the tile doesn't match then it'll resort to going to the first tile, the one that's the one's ID that is zero. So all of these would be tile zero, but this right here would be tile with the ID of one. So let's get started implementing this so right now I have it I have this little thing set up I think it looks nice but I'm gonna get rid of it it's gone not going to need that and I'm going to go to world and I'm going to create a new constructor and it's going to take a string for the world now since a world is going to be two images one being for the tiles and one being for the entities we're going to need two buffered images. I want to call the first one tile sheet new file oh, with uh, levels plus world plus underscore tiles dot, dot PNG all right so the first line is a buffered image tile sheet and that's equal to image IO read a new file and it's going to be world underscore tiles dot PNG And I'm also going to copy and paste it. And this will be called entity sheet. Underscore entity. Now, we I won't go in depth with entities in this video. And instead, I'll 
continue more with the entity stuff in the next video. So, yeah, we're only going to be using the entity image right now for the player. Okay, so now let's get with doing our tile. I'm going to create, oops, I'm going to create an integer array for the color color tile sheet and this will equal to tile sheet get RGB 0 0 tile sheet get width tile sheet get height null offset zero and the scan size will be tile sheet get width this will return all of the pixels within the image and I'm actually going to change a few things around with this width will equal tile sheet get width and height will be tile sheet get height and I'll just replace this with width and height there we go so now we have this we're going to initialize our tiles and bounding boxes so tiles equals new byte array width times height and same thing with bounding boxes Next comes the for loop. So for int j equals zero, j is less than height j plus plus. For int i equals zero, i is less than width i plus plus. So this would be the x and this would be the Y. I'll actually change this to Y and X. Alright, so we're looping through the X and every time we're done Y here increments. So we'll be able to get the actual tiles. So now we need an int pixel equals color tile sheet at i or not i x plus y times width so this would be the pixel and last but not least we'll need an int well, actually, since we're only going to be using the red component, I'll just call this red. And we'll shift it over 16. I'm going to put those in parentheses and put and 0xff. So now we have just the red component. So if red is equal to one, then hold on.
All right. Okay, I got a, I got a better way of doing this. Instead, we're going to use tile t equals tile dot tiles at red. And this will this will cause an array out of bound exception if it's not used correctly. So what I mean by that is right now our tiles is at 16. And if you want to avoid this, you can change it to 255 because of the color values. Or you can, yeah, or you can do this and set it within the try and then catch an array out of bounds exception. I think it's array index out of bounds. It's a right index out of bounds. And you'll just set t equal to null. And then here we'll do if t is equal to null, then we'll set tile. Heck, I don't even need I don't even think we need to set the tile. So if it's not equal to null, then we'll set the tile t at x and y. And that should be it. I'm just going to comment this out for now. And I'll get on to that in the next video. So, Okay, so now after we finish with that and I save my level here I didn't do that now we can see if our level loader works so here I'll just call I'll pass in test level and we'll load can't divide by zero. Okay, I didn't set the scale. That's all. There might have been something else that I forgot to set. Nope. Yes. And that would be the world projection. I'll just copy and paste it. Alright, and before we run, I made a mistake in the code. I accidentally uh, used the bit shift to the left instead of to the right. So, make sure you change that. It would be that. That'll def this will definitely give us the right color. Uh, my bad. Okay, so now our level looks like this. And if we run it now, there is our level. looks nice so you could change it and I don't know 
have a house one weird looking house there there's a house fill this in save let's run the program and there's the house so now that's pretty much it for this video um, in the next video I'll go over some making entities for our game and then we'll finish off the level loader I'll see you in the next video